Hello everyone, Mike Grempel from Excel Bytes with today's Excel blog post. Today we're going to take a look at the address function and a specific use case that came from someone who had sent me a question recently. So using the address function was the ideal way to come up with the solution. So let's see how we can do that in Excel. So here's our scenario. I have sales data from 15 divisions January through December of this year with totals by division and totals for each month and then a grand total. And on a second tab called summary, I want to be able to pull in the sales through a specific month. So if I use the drop down data validation list and I choose April, I want sales through April for each division to appear here. If I choose October, I want sales through October to appear here. And we're going to use these functions, the sum function, indirect, address, row, and match. And here is the ultimate formula that we're going to end up with. It's a basic sum function, and we take the first part of the range from sales data B2, which is the January value, and then colon, and then using indirect address row and match, we're going to calculate or determine what the second half of that range is. Now, in many previous blog posts, we've talked about the sum function, we've talked about uh, row, match, and even indirect. So I'm not going to focus on how each of those work in this blog post, but I will touch on indirect for a minute. But basically, we're going to focus on the address function and see how that's going to work within this formula. So if we take a look at address and say equals address, you can see it creates a cell reference as text given specified row and column numbers. And if we look at indirect, you'll see indirect returns the reference specified by a text string. So the address function is going to give us the address as text and then the indirect function is going to convert that text string into a reference that we can use in our sum function. So if we wanted to insert a formula here to sum January through October, we would just type in equals sum, tab, go over to the sales data, and highlight January through October, close parentheses, hit enter, and copy that down and we would have that information. But obviously if we made a change here, it wouldn't change the data. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and delete all these formulas here, but I'm going to leave the first one because we're going to use the initial structure of this. And that is equal sum referencing the sales data worksheet and starting at cell B2 and then the colon because that is the first part of the formula that we want to end up with. But it's the second part of the definition of the range that we need to be dynamic based on whatever month is selected in cell A1. So what we're going to do is insert the indirect function. And again, that returns the reference specified by a text string. And now the text string we're going to create is using the address function. And the address function has various arguments to its syntax. It wants a row number, a column number. What type of absolute value is it? Is it an absolute cell reference, a relative cell reference, or mixed? And then it wants to know what style of reference do you want, the A1 type cell reference or the R1C1 type cell reference, and we're going to use the A1 type. And then we need to know what worksheet is the cell reference on. So let's start out with row number. So the first thing we're going to do is just insert the row number, and we're going to use the row function. And here in row 2, we're going to enter row 2, so it as we copy that down, that will change to row 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. So that takes care of the row number argument. I'll hit comma. The column number, we're going to use the match function. And what we're going to match, we're going to match cell A1 here. And I'm going to hit F4 to lock that as an absolute cell reference. Comma, my array is going to be 
the data in row one here. And again, I'm going to hit F4 to lock that, comma. And I want it to be an exact match, so I'll type zero. I'll close that, hit comma. And now we've moved from the row number, column number. Now it wants to know what type of absolute cell reference. Well, in this case, I want the row to be absolute, but I want the column to change based on the column we select. So I'm going to select the number 2 here. I'll hit comma. And now it wants to know, do I want a R1C1 style reference or an A1 style reference? I'm going to put a 1 for the A1 style reference. Again, hit comma. And the next thing it wants to know what the sheet text is. In our case, the data is on sales data worksheet. I put that in quotes. I close the address function, close the indirect function, close the sum function, hit enter, and now it says that the sales I have from January through October for Division 1 is 43,400. So let's just check that. If I highlight January through October and I look down in <clears throat> the status bar, I see it's 43,400. 43,400. If we change this to May, it changes it to 24-7. If we just highlight January through May, again, the status bar tells us 24-7. So now I can take and copy that data down. And every time I change my data validation dropdown, it will update the sales data through the month that I selected in cell A1. And again, we've accomplished that using the sum function, the indirect function, address, the row, and match. And there you have it. I hope you like what you see. If you do like what you see here, please take a minute to share this post on your favorite social network. I can be found on Facebook, Google+, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. So I hope you enjoy this. If you'd like to see more, please feel free to stop by my website, excel-bytes.com, and I hope you subscribe. So have a great day and happy excelling.